you. Next is from Lord Alton. David. Thank you, Lord Chairman. Uh, General, good morning to you, and thank you for the reply you've just given to Lord Stirrup. Can we drill deeper into the remarks that you made to IISS back in March of 2021? <coughs> you actually said, and I quote, we can accept some risk in our current force structure in order to create headroom to invest in our future force structure and indeed to utilise the significant uplift we've had in research and development funding to look <coughs> properly to the future. And in the reply you've just given, you talked about the importance of balance and the importance of agility. How should we balance the trade-offs between the size of the armed forces and new technology? Has Russia's invasion of Ukraine or the military role in COVID, which you referred to a few moments ago, how should that shape our response? And how does it assist us in working out whether 2% is enough and how, how much we spend and how we allocate that money in striking the balance you've referred to? No, thank you. Um, I think the first observation I'd make is um, the role of the CDS, who ultimately is responsible for trying to ensure that defence acquires the right capability, is always going to be... Um, a judgment between taking risk today or risk tomorrow and it is that judgment that you have to um, exercise the wisdom of Solomon over if you like uh, with the other service chiefs and sometimes you'll get it right and sometimes I'm sure you get it wrong but essentially it is about that judgment of balance between today and tomorrow. Now um, my point about uh, how rapidly technology is evolving is a vital point because we are now moving I think from an era of if you like, industrial age warfare, where it was about platforms, to an era where it is much more about systems. Now, we have to be careful about learning too many early lessons from what is going on in Ukraine. And there will be people who will be tempted to learn lessons about the future of the tank, for example, which we can elaborate on if we really want to. But equally, there will be people who, perhaps a more sophisticated way, are beginning to learn lessons about how the Ukrainians are using Uber based technologies to put very sophisticated artillery systems into the right place at the right time without them getting knocked out by Russian systems using technology that is very sophisticated, bought off the open domain to be able to achieve their effect. Now, some of that's not necessarily coming out very publicly in the open domain yet. So one has to be really careful, I think, about how one um, learns lessons and then applies them from what is going on, because they won't be obvious to everybody immediately. So I think that's quite important to recognise. Now, the question, of course, implies that there is going to be a trade-off between size, in a way, and technology and capability. And again, I think we're probably going to return to that in a moment. But, but my own view is that there is a very delicate balance between mass and precision. Uh, and there's always a temptation, I think, in defence circles to think that exquisite in terms of technology is going to be better than mass. Uh, and, of course, what we're seeing in Ukraine, notwithstanding what I've just said about lessons, probably suggests that mass remains relevant in all sorts of ways. So, it's, again, it's going to be about a balance, I think, with all of these things. <coughs> and I think that um, when we consider mass, and we'll do that in a moment, I I'm sure, there will be some observations that need to be made about critical mass in relation to the size of our regular and, for that matter, our reserve armed forces. So I would, I would put it a bit like that, probably, um, as, a, as an answer. Now, what we do have to remember, of course, is that the United States have, uh, has demonstrated at least three times in my career how technology can give you an offset strategy. And I think the offset strategy that most people would have noticed most was the one that we saw unfolding in 1990 uh, when we took Kuwait back from Saddam Hussein. And, of course, what one saw there was the extraordinary bringing together of digital technologies, pre precision conventional strike, and all of those remarkable images of targets being taken out that we could watch on our screens at home. Now, that proved to be a, a massive offset strategy, which enabled a force that was a lot smaller in many ways than Saddam Hussein's force to defeat an opponent that had, had greater mass. Um, so there are definitely occasions when you can see how an offset provided by technology can overcome some of the challenges of mass. But it's not always going to be the case, and one needs to be very clear that the offset is going to be a genuine offset. And people are now scrabbling around for you know, what is going to be the, the fourth offset. And again, I'm sure that's going to be based upon digital, it's going to be based upon data, uh, and it's probably going to be based upon systems. But whether big platforms 
remain relevant in that environment, I think, is an interesting question. Um, and those are questions that I'm sure you're begging of others. I think without trying to preempt colleagues who I think will specifically ask you about the size of the army, nevertheless, <coughs> our colleague Admiral Lord West told the House during our Queen's speech debate only last week, he said our Navy, Army and Air Force are too small. And on the question of tanks, Lord Dannett said, are 148 main battle tanks sufficient? But I'm also, if I may, just interested to hear your reaction to what Jim Mattis, the US Defence Secretary, said four years ago, that... Britain's ability to continue to provide this critical military foundation for diplomatic success is at risk of erosion. Is that something with which you agree? Um, I think it's definitely a risk. Um, it goes back to my point I just made about critical mass. Um, I mean, what I think we have to be able to do uh, with all three services, and for that matter what we contribute in cyber and space, is to be able to bring adequate combat power to bear within NATO. That means that we get the appropriate respect we get a massive amount of respect at the moment in NATO for our thought leadership. And I was found at the Chiefs of Defence meetings that we had in... in